guys, it's Emma. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will share with you three tips that I use to add 30K to my annual compensation when negotiating my data science offers with Airbnb. In my last video, I shared with you all about the details of three offers I have received during my job searching in 2019. I also explained what the different parts of a compensation offer are and how to choose between competitive offers. If you missed that, I highly recommend checking out before dive into this video. While I did end up going with the Airbnb offer, the offer I shared in my last video was not actually the initial offer. My initial offer from Airbnb was for 230k, but I was able to negotiate it to 315k. Now, maybe you are tempted to tune me out at this point. Negotiating an 80k increase? That sounds impossible. But the thing is, negotiation is very doable. It's just that most people are too afraid to even try it. I made the same mistake with the first data science offer I ever got. I had low confidence, so when I was offered offered 110k in a location I really liked. Even though I had other offers, I did not try to negotiate at all. I was so desperate for a job that I did not even attempt to negotiate a better offer. So at this point, you are probably wondering how I was able to go from not negotiating at all to negotiating an 80k increase. In this video, I am going to share the exact tips I used to negotiate my offer. We will also look at two different types of negotiating situations. Negotiating when you have competing offers and negotiating when you only have one offer. Just remember, improving an offer is possible and you can learn to do it. Now, let's start with the best case scenario, having competing offers. For obvious reasons, when job searching, you will be applying to multiple companies. If possible, you should always pursue multiple opportunities all the way to the offer stage. Even if you are only really interested in one particular company, having multiple offers is ideal. It gives you leverage, which you can use to push for a better offer. Sounds simple enough, right? Multiple offers means greater leverage, which means you will have more power during negotiations. But somehow, even people who have multiple offers are often hesitate to negotiate a job offer. Why is this? At the end of the day, no one wants to appear ungrateful or greedy. We worry that attempting to negotiate will make us sound rude or pushy. In fact, many people have the false perception that only rude and pushy people succeed in these types of negotiations. And because of their distaste for this, they don't bother trying. What are ways you can negotiate in a manner that is both effective and applied? I'm going to talk about just three tips that I use to negotiate my job offer in this video. These tips will give you clear actions to negotiate more effectively and and also shed some light on the whole process. Hopefully, this will help you so that you feel more comfortable negotiating. Before we go further, I do want to recommend a great blog I read in preparation. You can find it in the description below. This two-part blog has 10 tips for negotiating a job offer that walks through the stages step by step. It's a great resource that I have used myself. However, while it is a great resource, I also think 10 tips is a lot, especially for those just starting to learn the art of negotiation. So in in this video, I am going to break down just three things that can help you successfully negotiate. These are easy to learn and can make a big difference. The first tip is to protect information. One of the biggest mistakes many people make with negotiating is immediately asking for a certain number. The job might offer you 100K and you might ask for 110K. Why is this a problem? Asking for more money is what the negotiation is about, right? Asking for a specific number right away is equivalent to revealing your hand while playing poker. Once the recruiter knows how much you want, the negotiation is essentially over. They know what they have to offer to get you to accept. To keep your negotiation power, you want the employer to be unsure of what you are thinking. Will you settle for 110K or will you only accept 120K and above? How good are your other offers? What were you making at your last job? If the employer is unsure about these things, then they are unsure what it would take to make you accept the offer, which gives you far more negotiating room. So the bottom line is that when the recruiter asks you what you think about an offer, don't review your hand, have a positive attitude, but do not make specific comments about the aspects of the offer. Mention that you are talking to other companies and cannot say more until you are closer to making a decision. Basically, leave them guessing. Keep what you know close as your information is your negotiating power. Okay, but what happens if the recruiter is being aggressive? Sometimes they will push you to give them a number or even a ballpark figure of what you might be happy with. For many of us, 
it can feel uncomfortable try to hide information the recruiter obviously wants. So what can you tell them instead? There are a couple of options. You can say that you believe the company will offer competitive pay. Competitive pay tells the recruiter nothing definite and it does nothing to hurt your negotiating power. Saying that they will offer also leaves the floor firmly open for negotiations. You could also use a delay tactic if the recruiter gets pushy. Say something like, I cannot comment on the details of the offer yet because I'm still in the process with other comments. Even as you deflect the recruiter's attempts to get information out of you, remember to stay positive. You can choose by saying things like, I'm sure we will find something that we can both be happy with, and I'm excited about the opportunity of working with your company. You never want to come across as being difficult even while you protect your information. The second tip you can use to leverage your power is to imply that you are not the only decision maker. This is actually a technique that call centers use a lot, and what it does is to protect you from intimidation and lower the tension. Think of the following example. When you call a customer support line, the person who answers the phone usually lets you know that whatever they are telling you is not their decision. It comes from someone higher up. That way, it is harder for you to blame or pressure them because it's not their fault. So how do you apply this technique to negotiating? Simply suggest that you have to talk things over with someone else before making a decision. That someone else can be a partner, a family member, etc. You can simply mention that this is an important decision and I have to discuss with my family then decide. Even if you don't particularly care what the other person thinks, acting like their input is vital puts you in a much safer position in terms of negotiation. If there is a decision maker behind you that the employer cannot reach, then attempting to bully you or pressure you will be pointless. This is an especially great tip if negotiating makes you nervous, implying that you are not the only decision maker alleviates some tension. Negotiating is often stressful with an employer trying to intimidate you. And this tip helps ensure that the employer does not try to add to that stress to force you to make a decision. So by now, maybe you've managed to work up the nerve to negotiate. You have negotiated back and forth a bit, and now you want to actually finalize an offer. Once you have stepped onto the merry-go-round of negotiating, how do you get off? The final tip for negotiating offers I have for you is to always have a deadline and end goal. Negotiating shouldn't be a merry-go-round. There should be a clear end point that you are working towards. This means two things essentially. One, have a time deadline. Give yourself a deadline by which to make a decision and make the company aware of the deadline too. The deadline serves two purposes. It both prevents you from making a premature decision and from twiddling your thumbs for too long. The deadline is when you will make your decision. The second thing about having a clear end point is knowing what you need to accept an offer. Don't waste your own or company's time. If you know that nothing a company offers will make you accept a job with them, then don't negotiate with them. Negotiating is not about being difficult, it's about being honest. Having a clear goal keeps you from haggling for the sake of haggling. Plus, when your deadline does arrive, you will know exactly whether you can say yes or not. Just those three tips can go a long way in making you a more successful negotiator, and they work best when you have competing offers. But does that mean you cannot negotiate at all if you only have one offer? The answer is no, you can always negotiate. You may feel that you have no leverage at all if you only have one offer, but you can still evaluate the offer and negotiate if you feel it on the lower end of what you should expect. Now you may wonder, what do you negotiate with? When you have more than one offer, you have leverage. So what do you use for leverage if you only have one offer? Remember that knowledge is power. If you know the average compensation and the benefits at the company, then you know what you should expect from an offer. If the company tries to lowball you, you can negotiate for more reasonable compensation. So how do you know what is reasonable? Researching online, you can usually find the information you need. For example, levels.fyi is particularly a great resource. This site contains information about the compensation and different levels with many companies. Remember that a senior data scientist should expect to make more than a junior. It gives you an excellent idea of the pay rates for not only the company you want to join, but also for the level. Even if the site does not have the specific company you are talking with, you can find similar companies to give yourself an idea of the pay range you should expect. With this information, you can evaluate if the offer is low ball, average, or above average. If the offer is above average, it is challenging to negotiate for a lot more. However, if the offer is average or even below average, a one-time negotiation could prove helpful. Ask for just one thing, either an increase in salary, stock, or sign-on bonus, 
and tell them you could sign the offer right away if they agree with you. Here is an example of an email for one-time negotiation. I really love the mission of coming and the culture, and I think that it would overall be a great fit for me. I really enjoyed connecting with the team. I'm truly thankful for the offer, but this is a very important decision for me considering reasons. I would appreciate if we could add 20k more on sign-on bonus or 50k more stock to this offer, then I would sign the offer by the end of Monday. This example has several aspects that make it work. First, you should always thank the company and make clear your interest in the job. It also helps to offer some reasons as to why. Reasons turn the decision into something other than simply giving you more money. Some reasons could be the cost of relocation or a need to pay off student loans. Giving any sort of reason puts a human face on the situation. This email also provides them with two options. Remember that in one-time negotiation, it helps to ask for only one thing. But giving two options make it more likely that the company will agree to something. Just make sure that both options are something you would truly be happy with. Finally, there is a guarantee and date of acceptance if they agree to the negotiation. The company knows that if they give you what you want, they can get you to sign quickly. If you have no other offers, know that you probably cannot realistically accept several rounds of negotiations. However, even just a simple email could make a small improvement to your compensation that could pay out big over time. Negotiating is always worth a shot. So those are my three tips for negotiating. Negotiation may feel awkward. You may think that it will make you look like a bad person. But the truth is, you don't have to be pushy or greedy to negotiate effectively. It's always possible to negotiate while being positive and professional, and doing so may help you end up with a significantly better offer. That's everything for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below, and stay tuned for even more tips, strategies, secrets, and techniques for data science interviews by subscribing to my channel. See you guys next week. Bye, guys.